everybody. Today we're going to talk about titrations. We're going to get to actually see one in action. Titration is a very specific reaction uh, where we're allowed to measure out very small specific aliquots of a substance and determine maybe what the concentration of an unknown is. In this case, we're going to look at titrations of acids and bases. So I have my burette here. You'll notice the burette is a very specific piece of glassware. It has a lot of very precise uh, gradations on it. So this allows us to be very precise and exact in the amount of liquid that we measure out. And this is full of sodium hydroxide. And then here I have some hydrochloric acid. And I don't know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid in here, but I do know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in the burette. We're gonna get an indicator, in this case phenolphthalein, because it's gonna change color at about the pH that we want it to, or the pH of what we're looking for, which is the equivalence point. So we're gonna carry out this reaction. I'm just gonna start adding some of this. And we have to know what the reaction is. We know I have sodium hydroxide in here, and I know I have hydrochloric acid in here. So we can write that out. We can see what is the actual specific reaction. We can see that it has one-to-one -one, uh, stoichiometry. And so because of that, because I know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide here, and because the burette's gonna let me determine exactly how much we've added, we can figure out exactly how many moles of that titrant, of that sodium hydroxide, we've added to this burette. And if we know the volume of our acid here, we'll be able to determine how many moles of acid are in here. Once we know the moles of acid and we know the volume, we also know the molarity. So what we're looking for is the equivalence point, the point when the moles of that base are equal to that moles of the acid. And there's some uh, fancier ways we could do it that are much more expensive, but a really cheap and easy way is using an indicator that changes color. So maybe you noticed before, as I start to add that base, and of course now my burette stops working, there we go, you'll see that pink starting to appear in there. That's the color of that indicator. So this indicator has two forms. It has a protonated form and a basic form. And one is clear and the other is pink. And as we get closer to that form, or the, uh, the uh, unprotonated form, this basic form here, we're gonna get that pink color. So I wanna add this until I can barely see any of that pink color at all. And that's gonna take us to what we call the end point. So hopefully we'll get there sooner rather than later. There's a bunch of people in the background. They're talking about me, but I'm not gonna let it throw it off, me off my game. So when we get to the point where that pink color persists, that's what we would call the end point. This is technically just a little bit past the equivalence point. At the equivalent point, the acid and the base are equal and when we go just a little bit beyond that, I have a little bit more base, the pH is gonna shoot up, and we're gonna see that pink color appearing. So that's what a titration is, important definitions. What's a titrant? What's your end point? What's your equivalence point? Um, we'll look more closely in the next video at how do we determine what these actual concentrations are, what happens before we start a titration, what happens as we get close to the end point, what happens at the end point and beyond that. And we'll look at some different types of indicators as well. So hopefully it helped you to see this in action. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense or it becomes less abstract for you. And I'll see you in the next video uh, where I'll be sitting at my desk again and I'll be my normal boring self.